Oh, hello. So you want to make a drum riser? Okay, let's go. All right. The first thing you have to do is find out how big your drum kit space is, okay? And then go an extra one foot in each direction. Okay, let's get a close look at this. I've sized up my drum kit, and this is the space it's going to take. 240 centimeters, that's the width, the length, or the depth is 180 centimeters. I couldn't find 240 centimeters by 180 centimeters, so I grabbed two of these which I will join together. Okay, this is the top part of my stage, my platform. Here's the 180. And there's your 240. And we're going to mark out top of the platform. If you've got two pieces like me, make sure they don't move when you're marking them. Okay? Okay, now I've got all the outside marked. And now I have to figure out the inside. I've marked out my middle frame. Make sure, if, you, if you're using two pieces like me, make sure they're tight together. Now remember, you're making for yourself a award-winning drum riser. So you have to put the time and effort and a bit of money into it, okay? When I'm making a, uh, a, a drum riser with tennis balls that looks like a sandwich, I, I must have watched about five videos and they're all the same. A fifty dollar drum riser that looks like a sandwich. Look, nice. And it bounces too. Okay, now we have to make another rectangle, a smaller rectangle on the inside of the platform. So put your timber frame up against the other line and draw a new line, like so. Okay, what's going to happen is your frame is going to be sitting on this line, not the outside, okay, on the inside. Do that right around the whole of the platform, but don't touch the inside going crossways. Okay, now this is what it's supposed to look like. Okay, now, I've marked out all the framing pieces that I need with their measurements. The blue tape is my boundary for that particular piece. This one here is 225.5. The one in the middle is 160.2. The edges, 170.5. The midsections, 108. Okay, I've got boundaries everywhere. So I know exactly what to measure and where each piece is going to go. Okay, I've also marked them out on the timber frames. 108, 160.2, 170.5, and 220.5. Okay, so we have to cut them to size and bring them back. Alrighty, I'm gonna start off with my biggest piece. It's 220.5. Okay now, 
position the blade right on the line. Okay, look at that, it's a nice clean cut. Okay, do not throw away these offcuts. You'll be using them as guides. You'll need at least about four pieces. Okay, now that you've chopped up your timber to size, it's time to put this jigsaw puzzle together. Okay, you won't be needing these no more, so take them off. And lay the boards down in between the lines. At this stage, it doesn't matter if this moves, if it's starting to look like that, don't worry about it. We can fix that up later. Start placing your clamps on the outside of the frame first. And make sure they're very tight and flush. Okay, I've done all the four corners. Now it's time to do the insides. Okay, before you put the clamps on the insides, check to see if these are correct. Make sure the wood is inside the black marking. This is very important. Push that into place. All right, now I've clamped the inside. Okay, this frame is 45 millimeters. I'm going to be using 75 millimeter screws, 10 gauge. You screw the outside of the frame first, these four, the red brackets. Screw all them in and then we can start we can start on the middle ones. That's the black brackets. Okay, it's done. Right, very tight, very solid. Now remember in the beginning of the video I told you to keep your offcuts. Go and find them, bring them out, put two up against the wall, like that, this is the middle, alright, there's the middle there. Now, what we have to do is lift this up and put that underneath that, okay? Make sure that these are tied against the wall. Very tight. Okay. Get the other two pieces. Put one on this side where the frame is, intersection. And put one on the other side. Okay, now we can put the top on. Okay, the outside timber serves as a guide. Look at the inside.
okay? That's how much space you have to drive a, a, um, a, a screw in. Now put them together. And realign them. Okay, now they're perfect. So when you nail in here, there's something underneath. Here you've got a big space. No problem on this side. Okay, remember this is, this is, this serves as a guide. So you know exactly where your wood is going to be underneath without looking at it. The plywood I used is about 15 mil. I'm going to be using 40 mil 10 gauge screws. I'll probably need two packets. Okay, there you have it. All the screws are in. Ten centimeters apart, and in the middle section where the two boards meet, I made the zipper. That's called the zipper. One of these screws is under the surface so we don't get any lumps in the carpet. So the next stage is to dust this, clean it, vacuum it, get it ready for the carpet because we're going to glue it on. Alright, now I'm going to start digging holes for my tennis balls. But before I do, I'm going to lift this stage up so I don't damage the timber underneath. Look at the mess this thing makes. Eh? Look at that. Perfect cuts. That's where my tennis balls are going to go. These are my tennis balls. against the wall facing towards me I've got the carpet upside down on the floor I have ten meters away oh sorry ten centimeter oh, I'm ten centimeters away from from here to here so when the, carpet, when the carpet goes over, 
I need, once the carpets are here, I need one and a half centimeters here and five and a half centimeters there. Then I'll cut the rest off. Okay. Um, I'm going to glue all this and I'm going to walk backwards onto the carpet and just lay it down, drop it. Um, okay, I have to gaffer tape the edges here all the way around so when I bring this down the um, the carpet doesn't move because it will so by having the tape right around the outside and except for against the wall what that will what that will do is stretch as I'm bringing this down it will stretch this towards the wall Okay, so the gaffer tape will hold. After you finish stapling the sides, put some weight on because it's going to take 48 hours to dry. And uh, I'm going to wait a week.
when you're cutting the carpet out of the hole, test this to see that if it's going to touch the, uh, the floorboards, okay? If you're in the clear, go ahead and start cutting around the hole. See how solid that is on the corners, on the edges? It's very, very tight. That's what you want. Voila! Okay. When you run your finger downwards to see that if the carpet is stuck on. And in this case, it's perfect. Clean all the areas so they can put glue down. That's what I'm going to use. Okay. Now, with this stuff, you gotta be quick. So have all these ready, because this will set in five minutes, and in half an hour, you'll need a tow truck to take it off. Okay, I've got everything ready now. All my fittings. The clamps are right next to each fitting. Ready to go. And no time wasting over the weights. For these two, because they're, going, they're not going to be clamping anywhere, because they're too short. And I have to come out a bit. So these are two weights, that's for that one. And this one here. The rest I can clamp down. All right, here we go. Okay, put some gloves on before you start playing around with the glue. Cut this bit off. Okay, wipe your knife clean from the glue. Okay, the glue comes with this, so you put that on it. Okay, tie it. Wait till it comes out through the nozzle. And now you're ready to work. show you another example on the side here where I use a different type of clamp and I use this type of clamp it also does a good job you can also take this part off it's perfectly on that corner there, holding, holding that box in place. I'll go ahead and do the rest. I glue them all on, plug them in, clamp them in, same with the other side. Now, next, what I want to do is see how we made these little channels here. Look for imperfections like 
like this. You can put your finger in and fill that up. And the sides, fill that up with uh, wood filler. Okay, all those channels there. All right, you can use any of this stuff. You don't have to color match some of the tools I'm going to be using. Out like that, it's a good sign. That means it's more than enough. You can send it back. Okay, have a look at that. See how it's popping out just a bit? We'll send that back. Make a level. Okay, do that everywhere, especially on things like this and in the cracks. Okay, I've filled up all the gaps. Even the uh, where I screwed the sides in, I covered those holes as well. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and remove all the clamps. Installing the lights now. So what I'm going to do is. because it's still wet okay that's the wood filler it'll probably take another day for it to dry let's try connecting these I'll get a close-up on this this is still wet so be careful I'm just testing all this here Very gently. Switch the power on and see what we got. Let's turn the lights off. Ooh, I like that. 
Okay, it works, that's good. Looks like a spaceship. Okay, I had to cut 50 pieces of this. As you can see, they're all wet. So, I'm gonna put them in the oven. See if I can dry them fast. Okay, it's been 15 minutes now. Okay, that feels dry to me. I'm gonna take them all out and put the other batch in. Okay, this is what they look like. I just pulled them out of the oven. This is the wet one. See the difference? Difference in color. Look at that, it's obvious. These are nice and dry. 15 minutes in the oven and uh, Bob's your uncle. Okay, now that I've got my dry roasted wood, I can carry on with my work. Okay, next step, get yourself a sanding sponge. It's, uh, this one's really good. It's 60 grit on one side. See that? And on the flip side, it's 120. Okay, you can see it. Okay, the rough side is to grind all the excess off and the smooth side is to smooth that out. Let's go. Get your vacuum cleaner ready as well. staples on this side because they can be seen. So I'm going to cut four of these pieces about five mil thick to cover all this to keep it away from the insulation. Okay next step remember your dry roasted uh, timber blocks well, we're going to start using them now. Okay. Get yourself 16 weights, small ones like this, or small boxes like this. They've got nuts and bolts inside them, they're pretty heavy. So we can uh, glue the blocks down in the middle and we're going to screw the blocks to the frame on the corners uh, so we can put that divider on top and then uh, put the insulation down on top of that okay if you take a look in there if you notice I've cut the wood blocks in various sizes which will come in handy okay now use Big ones like this, place in the corners, so you can hit it on both sides, there and there. Choose pieces like this to go in the centers. You have to position them there, 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 there. Have the weights nearby the area which you're working in, so put it right down, right on top, too easy. This is a digital caliper. Alright, now, my wood is this. The screws I'm going to be using is this. Okay. Now, the top layer of the stage is that. 
All right. So these screws will go into there like so and have this much left over. I'm going to drive the screw a bit further but not beyond 10 mil. Okay, how are we going to do that? Well, simple. When the screw is flush with the wood, it still has a bit hanging out, which is which means it's already reached the wood. Okay, it's already inside. It's already inside the top part of my stage. Okay, by how much? That's how I'm going to size it. By about two mil. Okay, 1.54. Remember, I'm playing it safe. So what we do? 1.54 plus 10 mil is 12 mil. I'm still under the surface. Okay, so I'm going to set this at 10 mil, and I'm going to lock it up, and then drive the screw into the wood. And there's my 10 mil there. That's the wood and the screw. Okay, I've got this part here resting against the tip of the screw. And on the other side, how are we going to check if we're in too deep? See the uh, screw, it's got, it's got a, a place where the uh, Phillips head screwdriver goes in. Well, that goes in about two mil, two, two, three mil. So I'm hanging just a little bit on the surface here. See that? Now, why I did that is because Look how much the screw's in. That's plenty. Okay. That's 10 mil in a 15 mil board. That's plenty. Now, why I did that is because when you've driven this in and you've gone too far, you got this set at 10. You got this set at 10. If you go ahead and do that, you've gone in too far, but you don't know that. You think, oh yeah, you assume everything's okay, but it's not. You've gone in too far. So, by me doing this, <clears throat> I can still see If there's a little gap in here, in here, between between this and the wood, right? Even though this is inside the screw head, if there's a little gap like that, can you see that? See the little gap? If there's a little gap like that, you've done your job. That's far enough, okay? Now obviously, if it comes out here, it's too far. But if you can, if you can see that close, and it's clear, paper thin, distance, if it's clear, then you've done a perfect job. Okay, you haven't gone too far, but you've gone in that much, which is plenty. Okay, that's great. Okay, see what I've done? I've positioned four blocks in each square, ready to glue okay and all the weights are ready and remember what I said about the glue it dries too fast so we work fast so all the pieces are right at hand we can begin I'll start off with that corner there
Okay, that's one done. Okay, all done. I'm gonna wait about a minute because the glue is still slimy. I want it to dry just a bit. Then I'll go in and put some, uh, I'll put two screws in this block. Secured. I've added little ones on the sides and one on each side and the corners have got big ones okay big blocks um, I'm gonna start off in that square and I've taped it down because I want to mark where all the screws are going so they don't hit each other and when I put the panels on I know where the timber is underneath so the screw can go through there and also not hit the other screws that are already in there and then I will take all the tape off and go to the next one do the same thing, tape it up, mark it, same here, and then here, and that would be the first panels down. I'm using 10 gauge by 100 mil, and then when I run out of this, I'll go to the 10 gauge by 75, and just drive them a bit further in. Okay. I'm going to put my fingers underneath, I'm going to glow on this one for about uh, a centimetre and a half to about two centimetres. Make sure it's straight. Okay, and then go the screwing. Okay, it's under the surface. That's my first screw. So I'm going to go ahead. Mark where I put a screw in. This is it. Okay, now it's screwed. Put the next one in. Okay, now I'm about one centimeter down. Um, it's higher from the other position. Now this should be really a little bit solid, so I just concentrate on this side. That's in. This is solid. No need to glue. Screw them in, they'll be very, very solid. Leave this out. 
uh, it makes it easier to peel off. Uh, and then there's a screw here, so I'll zigzag it. That's my other screw. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and use this. It works a little bit better than the rubber because it's uh, it's hollow um, and it's 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 made of rubber too. I just feel this will work better. I'm gonna go ahead and install that. that I need. I'm going to lay my 
two pieces down. No problem. Now don't forget, the secret to soundproofing is gaps, spaces. So we were underneath here, we made underneath here, we made a large space, an air pocket, so that acts as soundproofing as well. Twenty-five millimeter screws for this and I'm going to go every 10 centimeters. I've marked out where I shouldn't go. Okay the black markings here tell me there are screws there and I should not go there. I did that right around the whole rectangle. Okay and in the middle I've got a guideline that'll take me up to the other side which I will mark. Okay, I've screwed right around, very close, in the middle. Now move on to the next one. Okay, I've screwed everything in, all the panels. 10 centimeters apart, sometimes I went a little bit closer. Okay, next step. See these little gaps? Well, I have to seal these gaps. And I'm going to use this stuff. Okay, it stretches 300%. to look something like this. Now in areas where it's sunk in through the crack, that's a good sign, I will come back and refill that again. This thing, it's airtight now. Okay, you should have some leftover carpet. We can put them on the sides. So go ahead and measure what you need, mark it out, and then cut it. Put some weight on the carpet on the other end. You can either slice it with a Stanley knife or use the scissors. Either way, it's going to be easy with those weights. You want to join two pieces of carpet, you've got to go underneath, put them into place, push them down, and voila, the joint cannot be seen. Alright, okay, these are my three pieces of carpet that I'm going to use on the side. Make sure all the area is clean before you start applying glue. Okay, these are the things I need. 
the stapler with the staples, a pan brush and applicator, um, some mixing sticks that look like big, big pad pop sticks, uh, a cloth, and the actual glue. Okay, so I'm going to glue them on first, then staple them, and then take the staples off. Before we do that, let me show you something. See these corners here? They're too sharp. So, let me introduce you to my friends. These are my favorite tools of all time. I'm gonna go with a belt sander. Well, this one's too small. He'll be there for about five minutes, but his big brother, oh yeah, will get it done in about 30 seconds. Um, I've got about 10 of these. My favorite tools, I love them. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do the four corners. Uh, this makes the carpet just hug around the corner instead of, you know, trying to crease it into the corner like that. It, it, it won't stick, it won't stick properly. So, this way, it can still grab right on the corner. Okay, I laid the uh, carpet strip on the edge, very close, then, I put a weight on the other side because when I flip the cupboard over and secure it on this side, I can pull against it from the other side and staple that. Okay, I'm using the brush because it's more accurate than the applicator. It'll be 20 minutes before it dries, so you've got plenty of time, take your time, try not to make a mess, try not to touch it with the gloves, because you're going to be using the gloves to put it on, okay? Look what happens. Make sure you also go to the edges, very important, the edges are more important in the middle. Doing the side is so much easier because it's wood, hard surface. Very really fast to move across. No problem. It's like putting paint on. Go ahead and twist that over. Hopefully it doesn't fall. Position it in place. Bonds. Oh, you can see that. Bonds. Straight away. I don't, I don't think I'll have to use a stapler here. Okay, so go to the other side. Um, it on the other side, look, it's really stuck. Okay, pull 
level it tight. Make sure it's under the level, under that surface there. If it's too high, it's okay, you can cut that off. But if it's too low, that's no good, you can still serve the wood. Packet says, go over it with a roller. I'm going to use this can. If it's hanging out too much, E and cut that off. That's okay. They're not kidding when they say fast grip. Alrighty, now see the edge, how it's got a bit? That can easily be cut off. No problem. But you don't want it too short. Alrighty, this is the last stage. Every 12 or 13 centimeters, I'm going to put a 10 centimeter rubber block. I've marked out the whole board, right across everywhere, got my weights ready. Um, this is the rubber I'm going to use. You can see there, I'm going to stay away from the corners. Um, I do have one in the front, middle, and one in the back, but in the midsection. Stay away by 13 centimeters um, from the middle. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut up these pieces and then I'm gonna glue them on. Too easy. Okay, now this is the same rubber they use on the Isuzu trucks as engine mounts, except they're about that thick. Okay, I'm gonna do this middle cross first. I've laid down my, um, my rubber pieces and my weights. I'll do this section first. for a second that this board is my actual floor and I'm going to demonstrate the exercise in reverse okay I'm gonna I'm gonna move the floor instead of the board okay to demonstrate this the stage is sitting on the on this on this board here which is gonna be my floor okay all the way is on the edge of the uh, of the stage all the way is on that edge okay now it will probably take maybe another five seconds to flip it over to this okay as soon as soon as the stage meets the floor like this it's gonna knock them out Look, they're already moving. If I stay there at that point for five seconds, okay, like this, the entire weight of this 
is laying on these. Now it doesn't matter if they're screwed on or glued on, they are going to get ripped off. That I will guarantee you. Even if you hold it for five seconds. So, what do I propose? See that blue piece of timber sitting there? I'm going to lift it up and put it against the side of the drum riser to protect these rubber blocks on the side so when this whole thing is brought up to be twisted upside down the pressure is not going to be on these, it's not going to be sitting on this what's going to happen, I'm going to place that timber there see how it's protecting the rubber blocks this is going to hit the ground first and the entire weight of the drum riser on that blue piece of timber okay protecting these so they don't snap out of place when I have it on its side I have to pull it back away from the wall so I can have enough room to put it down here because the room is not big enough and pull it down ways and then um, I can bend down here so I'll need at least three of these boards one, two, three, maybe four because I'll be holding it and as I bend down about here I can bend down and leave leave it on the ground then I can move it towards the wall like I said it's very very heavy now and I'm doing this by myself look at that doesn't that look good oh yeah now any engineers in the audience want to tell me why there's no blocks on the corners eh? it's a bit like that uh, semi trailer going under the bridge all the engineers are sitting there trying to figure out how we're going to get that semi trailer under the bridge and the little kid says why don't we let the tires down well who can explain this there's none no there are no rubber blocks on the corners there we go none none Maybe I found out a new superior way to absorb shock. Alright, enjoy. Alright, you guys nothing. So far so good. You can't see me. But I'm getting very nervous. Like I said before, I can do the work of 10 men, so don't any of you are going to try this. <laughs> you, you wind up on the river. <laughs> If it wasn't for these boards underneath, it would be sliding all over the place because it's got carpet. Now it's wood to wood. If you're doing this by yourself, make sure you've got the weight against you all the time. I'm not special I don't want to jump on it. I don't want to issues. I don't want to do it yet, just yet. It's still strapped on. It's still secured. If it wasn't for these, I would have dropped that a long time ago. Okay? I'll use two car roof straps to go right around, pull them really, really tight. Now I'll take them off. Let's investigate the rubber underneath, see what happened. Especially on the front. Okay. Here are all my rubber pieces. None of them have moved. None of them have snapped off. This is a very good 
little sign. Okay, now, I want to test the lights. Would you get a load of that? It lights up the whole room. <laughs> something missing here. we got to add something. Oh yeah, that's better. Oh yeah. So what happens if you take the big lights off? That's the Ace Freely colour. Let's go with the Paul Stanley colour. Alright. Let's go with the uh, Jim Simmons theme. Oh yeah, they're the Dean colours. Red and black. That's it. Oh yeah. What about Peter Chris? Or Poison Ivy? Or the Hulk? Oh, I like this colour. I think we'll go with this one. Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, I still think there's something missing. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Oh yeah. 